everybody good evening and welcome so spotlighted today in this wonderful little series that we put together the very last minute about in march is um juan carlos tavares who is just a wonderful friend and educator and he joins us today to kind of demonstrate for us easy virtual choir which has been such a great uh tool and help for us this um in the in the past few weeks or at least in the in, during the pandemic. So uh, I'm so grateful that he accepted my invitation. This is so cool to see you. So a little bit about Juan Carlos. He's in his seventh year in teaching as a music educator. He is um, part of Coney, and he also leads the Wait, let me just see if this is correct. So, uh, Carlos, it's the Boys Chamber Choir, and you're the director of the Old District, or were the director of the Old District Elementary cho uh, Chorus. That's correct? Yeah. And then Juan actually used to teach at the California Avenue School and the North Parkway School in New York, not in California. So, he is now currently a doctoral student. And we are so excited at the Long Island University. So we are so excited to welcome him. And I think I will um, go over and hand the floor over to Juan Carlos. Welcome Juan Carlos, and thank you so much for doing this for us. Welcome everybody. Thank, thank you for having me. It's nice to be here. Let me just make sure, okay, there we go. I was muted before. <laughs> All right, so um, thank you for having me. and and have me share a little bit about my experience with Easy Virtual Choir. Um, so we all know that singing is a powerful human activity. And we know that children need music to celebrate and heal and just move forward in, in positive ways. And while my district is um, sort of transitioning into in-person now, um, special area teachers currently, we're still teaching remotely. So I like to think of music teachers as like the school's cheer, cheerleaders and music is the spirit that sort of fills the air, right? So I look forward to the day where I get to make music with my students in person and students fill the hallways with beautiful singing and music making. So I, I knew that this year would be different and I refuse to let uh, the pandemic get in the way of student performance opportunities. And so like many teachers like myself, um, over the summer, I attended many uh, professional development opportunities to inspire my teaching and learning. And so come September, we had our first celebration, our Latinx Heritage Month performance. Uh, my students performed um, through movement. Uh, we couldn't sing together at the moment. So we did solo singing uh, via Zoom and through poetry. Um, and so with budget cuts being made, I knew that I needed to advocate for, for my program and for myself. And so I said, well, what can I do? What, how can I get my students to perform um, together and make this a priority, right? So I thought about how can I provide opportunities for students to sing and make music together without spending hours compiling videos and editing videos. So that's where, um, that's what led me to Easy Virtual Choir. And so in January, I reached out to uh, my fourth grade team who I collaborate with on, on performances and each class I thought would present, um, I was inspired by the, um, the conference that we had where the, um, the diversity, equity and inclusion uh, led the closing ceremony. And we used poetry um, that featured black, uh, black poets and we performed those poetries through movement speech and solo singing. And so I wanted to have my students perform a final number. And so I sort of, searched uh, through Google and I said, what can I do so that I don't spend all this time? And someone has suggested um, Easy Virtual Choir. And so I looked, I looked into it and it's just an effortless way to sing online for free. Um, and software aligns video and audio tracks automatically and will save you lots of uh, video um, editing time. So I took the time to reach out to uh, EVC for guidance and with their help I was able to get my students to sing together and after after videos were submitted uh, by my students I pretty much worked about maybe 30 minutes be the day before the the, the presentation 
um, aligning videos and not even aligning, just kind of making sure that everything kind of fit and then finally download the final video. And so um, here's the picture. So what do we do, right? So using Easy Virtual Choir um, to kind of lead the way into singing through the pandemic. So I, um, here's a per the performance that I just mentioned where I had my students perform a final number um, using the song Glory. That was, um, the words were rewritten by Franklin Willis. Um, and so here we go, <clears throat> just to inspire you a little bit. <laughs> One day, when the glory comes, it will be ours, it will be ours, oh, one day, when the Lord has won, we will be sure, we will be sure, oh, one day. daunting at all it was so easy um that i was just so excited that i was able to do that and so um alan jung um he's the i don't know is, um manju is he on today is he on with us it was fortuitous like much of this webinar has been he just jumped on when he kind of turned on that uh, that slide so alan oh, if you no. want go ahead yeah so if, if alan if you would like to just introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about who you are and sort of um what was your goal and, and what was your vision with the Easy Virtual Choir and what led you to, to developing this? Hi. Um, hi, everyone. It's great to be here. I uh, actually just got back from my COVID shot, so this was a uh, really perfect timing. And um, uh, I'm guessing everyone here is a teacher, probably has already gotten it, but um, in California over here, April 15th was the general open day. And, I was really fortunate to get one. So anyways, um, yeah, I'm Alan. I, I created Easy Virtual Choir. Um, I created the site about in uh, uh, August of, of 2020. And uh, the idea was really um, actually because I was in my church choir and uh, everything shut down. And so we weren't able to sing at all. And I was really kind of just longing to, um, to sing with, with folks again. So being a software uh, engineer myself, um, decided to actually at first try to sing a little bit on Audacity, but found that experience really uh, taking a long time, <laughs> even just to do, even it's just myself, I'm not even inviting others to join me in singing. So I thought, you know, it would be great if I could create a way to automatically align the tracks and also include video and, um, you know, kind of created that prototype and, and invited the church choir on and they're all a bit older, um, 50 plus years old on average, and it was a delight to see that they actually figured it out. And I was like, wow, it's actually easy. So I named it Easy Virtual Choir. <laughs> and um, and yeah, after that, um, yeah, I think, you know, uh, they were able to use it to create um, one song um, every other week. The first time they did it, they had 10 people. 
And then they asked me, Alan, can we do 40 people? I said, hold up, slow down. I don't know <laughs> if we can do that yet. But, um, you know, they, they kind of just kind of tiptoed a little bit. And every week they did a song that was a little bit bigger. We found that we could do 30, 40 just fine. And so at that point, um, uh, it was actually uh, really amazing. Um, a teacher found us online on Google. And that's when we were kind of alerted that, oh, maybe teachers could use this. And so, you know, at that point, I kind of had this dream and this vision of, you know, I don't want any um, ensemble, whether it's a school choir, church choir, band, orchestra, community choir, to not be able to perform because of COVID, right? And, you know, like we, we want to allow everyone to continue to be able to, um, uh, you know, to connect with each other. Cause I think that's what we're all longing for right now. That's why I got the shot. I, I want to, <laughs> I want to kind of be in that, in that context again. And I know, um, you know, even with the vaccine, it, it may still take a while. And so, um, yeah, we're just, we're just hoping to bring that community back uh, for people. It's been wonderful to see so many teachers using it. So uh, yeah, I think that's a quick intro. Um, Thank you. And, and Alan has really committed to Easy Virtual Choir, um, realizing that, you know, from our conversations, realizing that so many more people in the world could benefit from this, from this platform, like music teachers. And so as, as music teachers began to familiarize themselves with, with EVC um, and share the possibilities, I, I know, Alan, I know we, you mentioned that um, although the, the webs, the, um, the app was free at some point. Now I know Apple and Andrew is charging $2.99 or $3.99. Um, Alan is making it possible to continue to be free on the web um, and make it sustainable for teachers to still use. Um, and so currently there is no limit on the number of tracks, right? And like he said, you can even 50 people can, can, can work together well. Um, and if for any reason you want more than that, you can contact um, Alan and he will be able to support you. Um, he's been a true gem in, in supporting my students as well. So my experience with, with editing videos before for Easy Virtual Choir has been pretty much zero. And so this software simplicity was really a beautiful thing for me. Um, and so to begin using Easy Virtual Choir, you don't need to create really an account per se, because all you really need to do is um, use your email. Um, and so once you have signed in, you can begin creating songs. Um, it is important to note that um, I would suggest to spend time getting familiar with the site, right? Take the time to explore, navigate the site, um, understand the privacy setting. Cause I know if you if you have students, you don't, you want to maybe list have it listed as unlisted versus uh, public, um, and also help, you, help prepare your students before recording, you know, finding a quiet place to record. Um, this could be optional, right, depending on what you want them to use, wear a solid shirt so they can really stand out. Um, headphones are recommended um, so that you don't hear any of the background noises. And also it does give you time to practice with the, re with the rehearsal track as often as you need uh, to feel comfortable with the song before you start recording. <clears throat> and so the site is really, really easy to navigate and I'm just gonna exit from here. So to gain access to Easy Virtual Choir, all you really need is a, is a laptop or a desktop, webcam, microphone, um, again, headphones, uh, Chrome browser and a Google account to sign in. And, and I'll move forward to this part. And there's a, a, a really beautiful guide on the site. Um, and it's a quick start to, um, to help you learn how to one, create a song, um, how to add tracks to a song and how to export and share a song. And I'm going to just kind of go into that site now. So this is the, uh, the site here. And if you go into the quick start tab here under tutorials, it gives you everything you need to know and what to do. So basically the prerequisites was what I just read to you. And to create a song is really simple. Um, and I'll show you how it looks on the actual, on the actual site here, but really you sign in. Um, and then once you sign in, you can just click on the tab there where it says new song. You can um, title, your, title your song, you can add a description. And again, to um, the privacy setting, the visibility part, you can either choose unlisted or listed. And you can add to group um, if you are part of another group as well. 
And that looks like this. So let me just go to my settings here. So let me go here. So to create, this is your main page. So to create a song, just click new song. And again, you just have to, you know, let's say, uh, I don't know, peace. Um, and then you can add a description and you can choose to make it public or unlisted. And something that you want to think about, and I'm going to go into this later, is uh, mm -hmm. preventing remixes, um, hide members list, or hide your students' tracks so that only you are able to see um, those who are submitting their tracks. And then again, if you want to add another group that you're a part of. Um, let me go back here. <clears throat> so that's the, the, creating the, the creating the song part. And once you do that, you finally have your first song, right? And then you can go into Song Studio and then start and begin to start making music um, and sharing that link with, with more people. Um, so once you have created your song, and I'll go back here to finish creating my song, uh, prevent remixes. Let's hide and hide that for now. So I'm going to go to next. So I'm ready to record my song. All I have to do really is go into Song Studio and you can either choose to record your first track live, like your accompaniment, or you can choose to upload it from, if you have an MP, an MP4, you can upload that by uh, clicking on upload video here. Um, you can, you do have the option of choosing a YouTube video. I have, I have not personally used that option yet, but if you click on it, I'm sure there is a way that the video from YouTube will get on there. Um, I've used the upload, um, the MP4 version. So I, ha I had the track that I had, that I had from Glory and I uploaded it. Um, and then my students had access to that. So one, <clears throat> once that was finished, um, let me go back to, uh, go here. So once that is finished, right? Um, and you record your song, I'm gonna go to now to my other songs where you can see what it looks like to start recording. So <clears throat> you uploaded your song or your accompaniment. Um, you, now you can share the link. <clears throat> so here. Da, 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 bum, bum, bum. So here's my glory video, right? So I can share the link by clicking on share and click copy link you can share with your students. Um, if you go to song studio here. Um, this is what your students can do. They can take the, the link. Um, usually there's a nice guide that Alan has as well that can share uh, beautifully what to share with your students so that they are successful in, in adding their, their track. Um, let me move this down here. So once your students have the link, they, they log in using their email um, and they go into add track here. And now you can see that I'm that my camera is on. I, I always suggest to my students to rename themselves so that way we know exactly who they are. Um, you can also change the settings here where you can change the mirror, um, record and the settings here with the microphones. And basically I always tell them um, you can practice first Right, you can always practice with 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 the person with the with the track that you have selected, and all the six tracks that you have upload. I, I believe there's six tracks that you have available to upload that you can sing along to, um, and if you need more than that, you can always contact Alan and he can work with you, uh, with that. But I always tell my students once you go into add song, choose the track that I suggest to them. So in this case, it would be sing with Mr. Tavares, right? You're gonna sing with Mr. Tavares. Uh, you can always listen to it uh, first and then record. Once students are, obviously they're, they're, they feel confident and they're ready, they can start recording. Now I always tell them, <clears throat> I always tell them um, when you record, wait until the very, very end because at the bottom left, you're gonna have a, a little button that says add song. So once you click on that add song button, um, that song is then added to, to the tracks here. Um, and then they can see themselves there. And that's what they, and then that's what I see. So once I, once I begin getting videos from my students, um, I begin to get them this way. Um, 
I, you don't see it here, but when once you start getting videos of your students, it's going to give you the option of of uploading them onto your onto your onto your drive. Um, I suggest you do that because then if you if you play without downloading them, it tends to freeze based on your internet connection. Um, a really cool feature once you get the videos, um, you can start editing them, editing them. And you can even rename them if you if if one student forgot to write their name. Um, and one cool feature that I love is that you get to lower the volume for each student that has submitted their their videos. So let's say you have one student who is really shining, you might want to put their volume up. Um, if you do have a student that says, well, you know, I don't mind singing, but I really don't want my video to show. I, I don't want to be to be displayed on the performance. Uh, this is a cool feature where you can just mute the video. And when you download the video, only the students whose video is on uh, will be downloaded. And that's kind of neat too. And I thought about, you know, if you do have a strong student and you don't have many submissions, you can always get that one student to like do two more submissions and just hide those two videos. So that was a cool option as well. Um, <clears throat> so that's adding a song. Um, let me move down here. And once all your students have submitted their videos and you have made the, the edits, uh, you can then export your song. And I know there is a limit on the amount of exports that you do within the hour um, because it, it does uh, take a lot of uh, memory. And I know, Alan, if you want to touch on, on that part, um, there is a, a limit. I think it's about five or six that you can download per hour. Um, and then I know that with this, with Easy Virtual Choir, it's it's been really easy that I don't have to worry about aligning tracks. But if for some reason um, you're listening to the to the to the final performance and something seems off, you can always go into the to the realign tracks tab here, and you can choose um, the video that you would like to listen to uh, with the accompaniment, and you can start along it this way. And so if you click on render waves, and I'm going to let. Alan explained this part because him and I were on the on on Zoom on Monday and he I just discovered this on Monday and I understand that you want the lines here the bars to kind of hit the vocal the vocal the melody part pretty much at the same time so I'll, I'll let him explain that so you guys can get a better understanding on that so Alan if you don't mind <laughs> awesome yeah thanks um, yeah yeah great so um, Basically, as Juan Carlos uh, has showed, um, you know, you you create a song, you create, you put your accompaniment track in. Your students can come onto the site, record along with you, sing along with you, and will automatically align. But sometimes, especially if students are using Bluetooth headphones like AirPods, the alignment will actually be a little bit off because there's some lag with um, with Bluetooth, and so. Um, Oh, it says my internet connection is not stable. Did you catch what I said or? Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah we heard you. Okay, well, great. I heard you. Um, <laughs> let me, maybe, maybe it would be easiest if I share my screen and I can just show it on a demo song that I have. Um, is that possible, Manju? Yeah, he, he's co-host, so. Okay, I'll just stop sharing. Yeah. Okay, great. Yep, yeah, let me, uh, let me share as well. Thanks. So this one. Great. So this is a, a demo song. Um, oh, by the way, uh, you know, if anyone is, um, you know, kind of furiously taking notes right now, um, I actually offer office hours on Zoom at the exact same time as this current meeting, but on Fridays and Saturdays, and it's every week. So um, if you have any specific questions, want to see another demo, um, want any of your students to come uh, to an office hours, which has happened before, um, you know, that time is available. Um, so feel free to just listen and relax as well. <laughs> Great. So um, for the realign track, so in this particular case, I did a one-man band, and uh, I was just singing the first line of a song. And let's suppose for some reason that um, you know, like maybe one of these tracks, the software automatic alignment didn't quite do its job right. Um, what we can do is um, after we turn on edit mode over here, we can turn on this. We can go to this align realign tracks area. 
And under realign tracks, um, it allows you to choose the reference track that you want to align everyone else to. Usually that will be your, your first track, which is your accompaniment. And then you'll choose the second track, which is not aligned somehow. So in this case, let's suppose that this base um, wasn't aligned. And so now that we have these two loaded here, uh, now we want to somehow be able to visualize what their alignment is. And so to do that, we have this button called render audio waves. And you'll see that the audio waves are here. And um, the way this works is uh, this black bar um, that you see here on both of these tracks, that's kind of the current point in time that that video is playing. And so what you want to happen, so I'll just play a little bit. So what you want to happen is you want the current position of that video to begin playing the sound on the top track and the bottom track at the same time. And so if I praise God from whom all blessings Okay, so in this one was actually pretty aligned, right? But let's, I'll just mess it up on purpose. So let me, um, let me mess it up on purpose by changing the alignment by a lot. So now what you'll see is this alignment track, the bass will come in real early. Praise God. Right? So it's just way early. And so the way that I would fix this, um, if this was the problem, for example, is I would um, just play, this, play the, the video until the reference track um, is right about to start playing the first note of the reference. So I missed it a little bit, so I can Praise go back God. a little bit here. Right, so now I'm at a position in the video where the reference track is just about to start playing the first note. And we can see that on the alignment track, the first note is already completely done. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go into this track offset area and I'm just going to adjust the offset and you can adjust up or down and you'll see that the little black bar is moving as we go. And so we're gonna wanna adjust it so that the first note is starting at about the same time. So maybe something like that. Praise and um, God one thing to note when you're doing this process, though, is sometimes uh, musicians and singers, their entrances won't be perfectly on the dot. They won't be perfectly clean. So sometimes you will want to align like on the second or third note um, just as a check. But remember, every time you change the alignment, you can always preview it and just hit play and just hear how does it sound a couple notes in. And um, once you're done with that, you just click save alignment and it will be aligned. So um, that's kind of an advanced feature, as uh, Juan Carlos mentioned. Um, it's something that you might encounter once you have like, you know, 30, 30 students or something. So you'll notice, oh, it's a little bit off. Let me find the right track to realign. Yeah, but, um, I find though, Alan, that it did, for the most part, it does align pretty, pretty good. Um, you have, you might have like one or two videos that you might have to kind of go in and, and edit yourself. And I sort of just did it by ear. And then I spoke with Alan and then he showed me that little bar and I was like, oh, that makes it so much easier. <laughs> so thank you. Something that I did, and I will add, um, when I had my students, well, when I uploaded the song Glory, I actually um, had the song in GarageBand, and I added four even clicks to kind of start us, it, start us out, so that way the, the track just doesn't start right, right away. And so the students listened to the four clicks before the song began, and then I used those four clicks to align the track. And for me, I felt that was easy. I just aligned the clicks and that, that worked pretty good for me. Um, okay, let me share my screen again. <laughs> okay. So um, again, the website does have these available for you. I, I have them here. These are instructions that you can even share with your students uh, when using Song Studio and they're gonna go ahead and record. You know, click Song Studio, you can practice. Um, click add track, um, and like Alan said, choosing the track that you want to, and it's usually the accompaniment, and start recording. And it will play through the beginning all the way to the end for you, and then once it's, it reaches the end, you can go ahead and uh, click add song at the end, and that student is done, and then you get your video. So these are nice directions for your students to, to follow if you're gonna post it onto uh, whatever platform you use. And one feature that I, that I just discovered really with Alan is the remix. And I'm already thinking of head for my um, end of year performance is the remix uh, feature. And remixing a song uh, duplicates the song to your account. So this allows you to make changes to the song. 
um, by adding new tracks, you can delete old ones, you can change track volumes without really altering the original song. And this is most useful if you want to take a song in a new direction, you want to sing a song with a different group of people or practice a song privately before even contributing to the main song. So um, I was thinking, well, how can I um, keep in mind the ORF approach? Um, and so students can use the remix as, as follows. And these are just some ideas that I was thinking about. Um, so the teacher shares the link with, with the students. And so this, and you have to uh, make sure that you don't click prevent remix so that students can then have that, that option of remixing the song. So they can download the song so they can then do the following. You can have the students create a body percussion with a rhythmic accompaniment using that track. So if you, if let's say uh, the teacher sings, um, I, like I was singing a song with my students today from the Dominican Republic, um, La, Cham La Chambelona, I can sing the Chambelona twice and then encourage students, well, let's think of a way that we can uh, create an accompaniment with body percussion. Um, and so they can use that track to then record their body percussion um, accompaniment. They can record the accompaniment using uh, percussion instruments. Um, they can use that track to collaborate with other students. You can figure out a way to um, group them. And this was also a neat way to think beyond, like I know this is our new normal and you know, going into now what we hope is back to what we were, well, how do we maybe think about not going back to that, but reimagine how education, how music education can look like going forward? And you can use this app even um, with other schools, like having your school, your 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 kids perform with with other kids from other districts, or even an elementary, another elementary school in your district. So whether it's in your district or not, I think it's a nice way to collaborate with other with other, with other kids. <clears throat> And so you can also use this as a way to um, encourage creative movement. And here I have a video, it's the same song. I'm currently in two schools and um, one of the teachers asked if I wanted to um, assist. And I said, sure, and I had the song, I already, had, I already did it with my other students. So we used the glory and we added movement and we actually involved the community with this piece. Um, so you'll see a a uh, member of the community um, doing a creative dance at the end. <clears throat> I should add though that um, we used Easy Virtual Choir, um, but we used iMovie to um, embed that other video. So you, you know, you yes, you can use Remix, but you you're going to have to get those videos downloaded and then somehow clip it together using like an iMovie platform. <clears throat> And this could be like a nice way to do a, a performance share for for your for your school. One day when the glory comes, it will be ours. It will be ours. Oh, one day. When the war is won, we will be sure, we will be sure, oh, glory, 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 glory. Open your eyes and look to the stars, never stop learning and you will go far, Jesus, the glory is more to you. When the war 
at the end with the video that I had um, that we all put together. So I thought this was an, a neat way to, to utilize Remix and uh, think about um, us as ORF inspired teachers and how we can use the ORF approach um, in utilizing EBC. Um, okay, and then another thought that I had was using the Easy Virtual Choir as an assessment tool. And again, keeping in mind the ORF work is is about the process and not the product. Teachers can listen to the individual tracks for assessment. So thinking about, uh, to think about what does this data tell you? How can you use this data to guide future, uh, future teaching and learning? Uh, know what your students may need from you and to think about um, and learn what students' strengths and weaknesses are. Uh, differentiate instruction to meet your students' needs, measure social and emotional learning, and you, you using this to lead class discussions, you know, I noticed, I wonder, and what if. And really um, keep, in, keep on singing, right? So this has be, really been helpful and this is still a, um, an, an experience that I'm still learning from and, and having these conversations with Alan. And again, he's, he's available for you. Um, Mostly, I think Monday through Friday, if I'm not if I'm if I'm not mistaken, you can make an appointment with with him, and he will walk you through and anything that you might have any questions. Um, I, I don't know if I missed anything important, Alan, that you feel I should add in regards to the site. <clears throat> um, no, I think you did a you did a wonderful job. Um, thank you. Uh, I'd be, you know, happy to. Um, you know, specific Q and A. Uh, happy to to answer yeah. questions that way. Can I moderate that? I um, Juan Carlos and uh, Alan. I do have a list of questions that people have put. Um, so when you are ready for that part of it, is this now that when you would like to start that? Yeah, or I would you share a little bit more and close out, Juan Carlos. No, this this is a good time. I just also want to add um, again as you explore the site. Um, again, there's a quick start. And there's also a lot of questions that have been asked um, that you can also find on this on the website as well. But I'm happy to take some questions now. All right. So some of these might be yes or no questions, and some of these might need a little bit more. So I'm so glad that Alan's here because Alan, as you notice that um, as music educators, we incorporate a lot of the barred instruments or classroom instruments, especially this is the, the, the elementary school version for us. You know, this is what so we are using this so much. So we do use barred instruments, recorders, uh, et cetera, in addition to people who are doing orchestra, et cetera. Right, so that's why the movement, the creative movement part of it is such an integral part of our process because that's just embedded into what we do as our show teachers. So I am gonna go ahead and um, address these questions and either one of you can jump in. So some of these like are yes or no questions. So one question is, does every student need an individual account or can a, student, uh, can a school purchase one account for them to use? Are this is something aligned to what? Uh, actually, what? Uh, maybe this one I could ask Alan because I ran into the same problem because that's how I got in touch with him a couple of weeks ago. Is uh, so it's interesting because uh, this teacher says, "Does every student need an individual account, or can a school purchase one account for them to use?" Yeah, that's a that's a really good question. Um, so the way the site is built right now, everyone um, needs to sign in with their own Google or Microsoft login. And most schools that we've seen so far are using Google Classroom. 
And so it basically just integrates with your Google Classroom login uh, and that's fine. Um, however, I have seen something pretty interesting where I think one school had their own school server and then mm -hmm. all of the students were, I think, I think the, only the teacher made an account actually. And then all of the students accessed the school server and sang through that. Um, right. I'm not exactly sure how that works. Um, it may be the Citrix thing, um, but that's what that individual school did. And um, as far as I'm aware, they're actually all doing it through one account on one very powerful computer that everyone can connect through. Um, yeah, so those are, does that answer the question? Uh-huh, yes. All right, so the next question is, uh, does it have to be a video as a first track or can you upload an audio file instead? You can. You can do audio. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the song Glory was an audio that I that I have that I, I had uploaded the audio version. I think it has to be MP4 from what I believe. Um, uh, the audio version can be M MP3 or M4A. Uh, you can also have an MP4 audio file that also works. Mm -hmm. Very cool. So that basically was our next question. So our accompaniment has to be in video format, but I think you just answered that. All right. The next question is, does this software work for making tracks for a band or orchestral ensemble as well? Yeah, definitely. Um, we have a number of bands and orchestras on the website. Um, the Probably the main thing to be uh, to, to take note of for band specifically is um, uh, you know, recording virtual choirs is 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 um, is, a, is a challenge, and we've tried to make it as easy as possible. But the fact of the matter is, you do have if you have a fifty person ensemble, you have fifty microphones, <laughs> and all of those have the um, chance to scratch against um, clothes. Uh, you know, you're in fifty different rooms, so you know the siren that goes off in one room is going to affect the entire sound, and so. Um, uh, kind of when it comes to band, the main thing to be aware of is uh, the, the volume of the instrument because band instruments are generally a bit louder and uh, the microphones, if they're really close, it can, it can distort the sound because it's too loud for the, for the input. And so um, we do have a setting on the website under recording settings that allows you to basically decrease the input volume. Uh, it's, you turn the auto gain control off. And once you turn that off, uh, it'll result in a, in a lower volume recording which is valuable when you have really loud inputs like band instruments. Very cool, thank you. All right, and um, the next one is, can you add any audio effects like reverb or panning? Oh, that's a great question. There is a- Oh, go ahead. No, no, I, there is a reverb option. I don't know about the other, the other part. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Um, we actually, hmm, I, I'm, we're, I'm curious now where you saw the reverb. We don't, we don't have that yet. We're working on um, some basic audio editing um, options uh, to put into the site. But what most uh, teachers are doing right now who uh, want to do the extra audio editing is they'll download the finalized MP4 off of the website. And then they'll put that MP4 file into iMovie or Audacity, whatever they're using for the audio effects. And um, kind of package the video together that way, but it's a lot easier than dealing with 50 individual files for 50 students. All right, and that leads us right into the next question was like, to be clear, this is to rec record and align MP3 files, and then you use another program, like say iMovie to sync the video. Is that correct? Are we shaking uh, your head, Alan? Juan? Oh, no, sorry. Yeah, I, sure. I, I was looking yeah, at that because I'm getting questions in the chat as well. <laughs> oh, got it. Um, uh, no, not not quite. So um, basically, um, I don't know if folks here are familiar with GarageBand mm -hmm. or uh, Soundtrap. And the idea of those softwares is you you have an initial recording, and then the you know the the following students will record along with the original track, and uh, we do basically a similar type of thing but with video. And, um, and you can sing not just with one prior track, but actually with multiple prior tracks. So your students cannot just hear the accompaniment, they can also hear some of their peers as well, or they can hear the teacher who has a guide track for their specific voice part or instrument part. Um, so yeah, you actually don't have to do any of the manual like realigning or like you know downloading 20 video files from a Google Drive and doing that yourself. 
you don't have to do any of that with uh, Easy Virtual Choir. Very cool. All right, so I think this is again related to is, um, can you only use a Chrome browser? And are you able to use an MP3 track, which you already answered, but can you only use a Chrome browser? That's yes. Yeah. Okay. Both of you are nodding your head. Yeah. Chrome, <laughs> Chrome is the one that we officially support. Although we have seen people using Microsoft edge and it seems to work, uh, no promises, but it seems to work. Um, but Safari, uh, unfortunately there's some features that Safari doesn't have as a browser that Chrome and edge do. And um, Firefox, um, I I've heard that the experience just hasn't been the best on Firefox. So we would really recommend people to use Chrome or, or Edge. And then we do also have the mobile apps um, if uh, you know, they prefer to do it on, on a mobile device. Very cool. So then it goes to, I like the way the questions are just flowing one into the other and some of them are very simple. If you use a recorded accompaniment track, do we upload it where we upload the video? I'm assuming the answer is yes. Yeah. Okay. Now the next, the next question is how I got in touch with you. Okay. My district uses iPads. Does this app work well on the iPad? And maybe this is where you could talk about the purchasing part of it as well uh, as opposed to the desktop, Alan and uh, Juan. So with my experience, um, I, I um, started this journey before Apple began charging the $2.99, I think it is, Alan. So I was able to kind of um, get fixed in there. And so I was so excited that my students were able to use iPads because the first time around, they most of them don't have computers and my schools offered one-to-one uh, -one iPads. But unfortunately, I had to get in touch with my director of technology because, because it's a school iPad, she had to approve the app. And so students usually go into a self-service and, and uh, Easy Virtual Choir wasn't available through self-service. So she had to approve it. And so we're still kind of waiting for her to approve the app. So what I did was I just had my students download the app using their phones or their personal iPads if they had at home. And that was that. But I know that changed now because now it's being not you're being charged $2.99. So I'll let Alan kind of take over from here. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, yeah, so the app is is interesting because we've we uh, you know started with the website and a lot of folks were asking about the mobile app for for quite a while, and so um, so I, I I finally decided I'd bite the bullet and, and develop an app for iOS and Android, so iPhone, iPad, Android, Android tablet, um, everything, and um, that process was quite a process, and uh, I learned actually quite a bit about um, uh, building apps for for mobile. And uh, the, the thing that we found, unfortunately, is that um, <laughs> uh, the mobile apps actually uh, have a lot higher cost to us um, on, on a hosting side because the videos that they create are just way bigger and we have to process, reprocess those and store those and, and deliver those, um, those videos, all of which unfortunately uh, cost, um, cost money to do. And so, um, you know, with the goal of our project just being to help as many people as possible, uh, you know, we had the site free and open to everyone for, for a number of months, uh, for like three, three or four months. And, um, you know, it was wonderful. More people were using it, but then I was checking our, our bills with the cloud and, uh, <laughs> uh, it was quickly ramping up. Um, our, our forecasted bill for this month is actually $3,000. Um, and that's just this month alone. And so, um, you know, it's been a generosity project that I've been working on and I, um, uh, you know, have just kind of been funding it myself. And I realized, you know, that's, that's more than rent. I know I live in the Bay Area, which is very expensive, but that's more than rent. That's almost, that's approaching twice rent <laughs> um, in the costs. And so like, um, I realized, okay, you know, in order to help people for the long run so that the site doesn't just flame out, um, I do need to begin putting, you know, some some ways of, of some sustainability measures in place. And so that's really the goal there um, with the with the mobile apps. Um, so far, we have been donation supported. And so there are different opportunities to 
uh, donate. Um, uh, we actually just rolled out two weeks ago a membership option that allows um, schools and individuals to support us on an annual or a monthly basis. Um, and it's basically just a way to, to pay it forward uh, for others who um, you think would be able to benefit. And, and also for our members, we do give uh, a number of extra features. Um, you know, one request that we've gotten already, um, which is something that honestly we still have to think about is this idea of, you know, if someone becomes a member, can, can, they, can all their students get the app for free? Um, that's something we're thinking about. Um, unfortunately, with the Apple App Store, they don't let, they don't like have the concept of like a giveaway to certain email accounts. Like I wish they had that because it would make things so much easier for us, but they don't. <laughs> and so like we're brainstorming a little bit, like, you know, how can we deliver uh, the mobile app for, for free for, um, for our supporters? Um, and you know all of their students or all of their ensemble, and so that's still something that's in the works. And if anyone has any ideas, knows any app developers who you're like, oh, I remember so and so did that. Definitely let me know because I'm learning too. So um, so that's the status of that right now. Um, but the 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 web app, the, the website is is free and will continue to be because I know that's how a grand majority, over 80% of our users are are using it that way right now. So if it's done through the website, it's uh, it doesn't charge, it's free. All right, so thank you for that. And uh, here's the thing, um, again, coming back to the logistics of actually kind of creating um, a piece, would you recommend that students clap into their cameras at the beginning of their videos to know where to make the cut for your final video? I think that might be helpful only to give time to make the cuts. Like for example, like I had mentioned when I when I inserted the um when I uploaded the uh, the the instrumental track for Glory, I had went into GarageBand and I had put four clicks myself just to give and give time for the students to kind of prepare to enter. But I think that would be a good thought just to give time to make the edits because some kids just like to start right away. And then it might not give you enough time to make the cuts. So I, I think that might be helpful. Um, or you can provide yourself the clap when you are uploading the original song. I think that might be even more helpful for the student. Very cool, thank you. And um, here's the other sense. thing. Yes. Um, here is the, I think we have uh, still stuff from when we, we used to create the hard way, you know, go and download all the videos and put it together in whatever editing software. That clap thing has now got into our systems, I guess. Okay. Um, so here is another question that says, is the app COPA and FERPA compliant for younger children? Yeah. Uh yeah, we, we have it on our privacy policy um, on the website uh, that kind of addresses these two. Um, you know, as far as FERPA compliance, uh, that's for the educational records. At least that's my understanding. And, you know, we, uh, on our privacy policy in terms of service, we say don't place any students' grades or educational, <laughs> like don't put that on our site because, um, yeah, uh, you know, we don't want to uh, deal with that type of information. And then as far as COPPA goes, um, we actually, since we use Google for sign-in, we actually have a lot of the same, uh, you know, like we get all of the security and, and privacy things that they have kind of uh, into our site as well. And so, you know, all of the standard security measures as well, like, you know, the site is a secure connection and, um, uh, you know, you can, we have all these privacy features that we've set up for you with the unlisted and hiding student tracks, hiding the names, uh, doing all those things. And so, um, you know, at this point, we have a couple hundred, actually, uh, if we count some of the schools with smaller numbers of students, we have over a thousand schools uh, on the site now. And, you know, a lot of them have done those evaluations and have determined, okay, like, you know, it's good for um, the way that we're using it. But of course, you know, please use it in a responsible manner. Uh, if you have elementary school kids, don't put any of their names on, <laughs> on the website, um, you know, use, use your common judgment there. Thank you. All right, so one final question comes back to the cost part of it. Uh, there have been times when uh, we've been able to get the, a paid app for free on a certain day. It's usually a promotional day that is offered. Is that something that could be possible? 
yeah, that that is something that that we definitely consider. Um, uh, yeah, that that's something that we're we're considering. And I mean, you know, until and you know until we kind of figure out, um, you know, what the situation is with the, you know, giving the setting the app is free for a certain set of uh, user accounts. Uh, probably the way we'll go go forward with um, allowing some uh, folks to get the app for free is with the promotional dates. And so we don't have a schedule for that yet, but um, but that's something we're considering, yeah. So along the same lines, Alan, um, I know that you did mention that there is the office hours and stuff. Um, is there like a newsletter that people could subscribe to so that they know that these updates are coming out or you're offering office hours or if you have announcements coming out or about the app that you would like to push out to people? Uh, that is a great idea. <laughs> I've gotten uh, pretty busy over over the months um, working on this and you know developing new things, fixing problems, answering questions. Um, but I think I think that's a really good idea because oftentimes I find I'm working really hard on something, I release it, and then a lot of people don't even see it. <laughs> and so I think a, a newsletter is a great idea. Um, I guess uh, information to be coming. I'll put an announcement on it on the website, and um, yeah, hopefully folks can sign up. <laughs> And the other thing is also we could probably kind of uh, jump onto your Facebook page. Could you send us put the link in the chat so that people can just join your Facebook page? Oh yeah, and that that's a nice way that and your Instagram so we can just if you push things out then people probably would have that access to. All right, I'm noticing we're up to three minutes to close. Thank you so much, Alan, for uh, doing this, and thank you so much, Car Juan Carlos. This has been just wonderful that you were able to kind of you know. Um, do this for us and introduce things to us and we were able but there are no coincidences coincidences this has just happened like fortuitously that all we just got to know each other and Alan was able to just jump in and we just happened to have this webinar coming up when I happened to get into a crisis mode and contact Alan which is great <laughs> all right so thank you so much um, both of you for being here thanks everybody our next one our next uh, webinar next week is Zooming with a purpose, and you don't want to miss Crystal Hendricks either. It's going to be really, really, really cool. So thank you so much for being here, everybody. And again, thank you, Alan, and thank you, Juan Carlos. Mm -hmm.